you get Lincoln Riley and he tells you he's playing wide receiver. So, <laughs> so Lincoln Riley, who uh, I'm not definitely not going to argue with his, um, you know, football knowledge as far as offensive football goes, but he wants to move him to wide receiver. And thinking about it, like, you know, that's probably one of the reasons he kind of, he kind of signed with USC um, to, to be in that kind of wide receiver role. You can imagine the matchup nightmare that he will bring to the table being six, six, 250, you know, seven foot, um, you know, wingspan, all that stuff like that. I'm sure the, the catch radius is going to be ridiculous when you look at um, what he brings to the table. So exciting news as far as that goes. I, I did notice that. I did, did like, I mean, Lincoln really talked about the video that he put out and how the video, you know, was about more was just him. It wasn't like a big show. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. For um, you know, I, I, he really is going to be a huge target and be a tough guy for defensive teams to deal with. Um, just a massive human being. You can't teach that. I remember um, your Ryan Holmes, who, who does a radio show with me, had an opportunity to, to go on the field at Allegiant Stadium at, with the Raiders. And he saw, he was standing very close to and saw um, Darren Waller up close. And that's kind of his comp for the NFL is Darren Waller. Um, they said, and I remember Ryan saying how, how humongous Darren Waller was like the, the dude is, dude is, a, dude is a huge, a huge, you know, individual. And that's kind of the same, same situation you're going to see with a guy like Deuce Robinson. Um, but now with the dynamic of him playing wide receiver and not tight end, and he's not banging on, um, you know, not having, not having to worry about linebackers and all that stuff like that and having to not having to block as much. I think it's going to free him up to make even more big plays. I mean, you have to account. It's going to be, to me, it's going to be interesting when they line up all these different pieces. How do you account for all of them? You know, I, you know, people talk about, I know other, other charging podcasts talk about, oh, they seen Lincoln Riley. They seen Lincoln Riley, seen Lincoln Riley. Like all these other teams have seen Lincoln Riley, but like who who stops him consistently? You know, the only thing that stopped him in the championship game against Utah was the was the fact that you know a bad hamstring by by his quarterback. I mean, let's be real. Like those those are the kind of things that that we're looking to stop stop this offense. I mean, like the guy knows what he's doing offensively. I think I think we don't have any question about what he's going to do. I think him having that vision to say, hey, you know. I'm, I, I can kind of see you as a wide receiver. And if you look at his little, um, you know, little card that they put out for uh, with him on social media, in the top right corner, I, I did notice I was like, wide receiver. And I was like, yeah, okay. Now, now it all, I, I can understand what he's trying to do. He wants to make that, he wants to make him to be, you know, that just matchup nightmare, maybe even like a Drake London type where you just can't handle him in, in, the, in the red zone. I mean, the red zone, the red zone, proficiency from this offense should be through the roof. Like it, it's going to be, if I see, I know they just signed one of the best kickers in the, in the nation. Um, the guy from, 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 from La Costa um, out here, out, out here in San Diego, where, where I'm at. Like how many times are going to use them? I mean, you, you got to have a good kicker. You never know. But like when they're playing some of these opponents, like how are they going to, are they really going to use them that much? Like, you know what I'm saying? So th that's going to be a huge part about, that's going to be a huge part of um, what USC does here um going forward but yeah he signed he delivered uh, and i know people are talking about the baseball ask aspect of it and i know that some articles came out and said hey you know what he might never play for usc because of the baseball stuff i think and i and i'm gonna i'm gonna just lean it on i'm gonna lean it i'm gonna pot a hog i gotta put this i gotta put this like pretty pretty carefully but i would say that as far as his baseball career i mean the guy has not he doesn't, he didn't play high school baseball. He doesn't, I mean, he plays travel. He doesn't, you know, I, I think, you know, I, as far as, you know, when you look at full circle softball and baseball, like softball teams, softball, big time softball programs are looking for girls who played, girls who played travel while, you know, men, they want to see them play on their high school teams. So we'll see that. He has the opportunity to play at USC for baseball. That could be something as well. I think I think that, that could be something that's really, you know, maybe a really interesting dynamic to this whole thing if he goes and plays baseball at USC and plays both. But I mean, 
I think the, I think where the where I think if he was, I, I'm not sure he's that kind of prospect. I know he, like, just because the skin color and the height is there, doesn't make him Aaron Judge. Like, so I, I, if you're gonna have a real comp, like, if, make sure you actually you'll get a chance to kind of look at the player and see, hey, is he really an Aaron Judge type besides the the skin the because the color of his skin and his height? Like, I mean, is he really? that level of of talent on the baseball field we don't know because i'm sure we've seen many baseball i mean many football highlights of this robinson but i guess we can't sit there and say we saw a, a boatload of baseball baseball stuff and i you know you go go pick up baseball magazine and stuff like that do you see a lot of deuce robinson there you know do you see a lot of two-star uh, um two sport athlete star deuce robinson may might get drafted by the you know San Francisco Giants or the Dodgers or whoever. Uh, no, I mean, I, we'll see. He's going to be out in Los Angeles now. We'll see if somebody wants to spend a high pick on him. Like, I mean, that's going to be huge. Do you want to spend a high pick on him and spend throw some money on him? See if you see if you see if he leaves college, college for college, um, to leave college uh, football to go to go to go to do that. I don't know. I think the best bet is he's going to use that six six foot six frame to play at USC. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't sweat it too too much. Um spring practice is coming along, it's coming along fine as far as that goes. No major injuries to, to report. So as far as that goes, that, that that's like the number one thing you want is like you want to get back and just say, hey, I don't want any big time injuries to happen. Um some folks were kind of kept back and, and, and not and not, not wearing a full goals because you just want to be careful this time of year. So we'll see what happens there. According to Lincoln Riley, both teams, you know, you know, the one one day, you know, uh, the offense won, another day the defense won, and then after that, you know, it, it, it's been back and forth, um, you know, them doing their thing. So we'll see, we'll see as far as as far as that goes. Um, Dylan Dylan Riola. So I usually don't. There's some really good Raider pod. I mean, excuse me, the um, Trojan podcast that talk about. 2024 class, 2025 class. I really kind of focus on all 22, see what they do on the field, looking at these transfers and who's gonna who's gonna possibly play in the upcoming season. That's what I kind of do. I know my wheelhouse, and I some some folks know like I mean my, my homie, um, the uh, USCJ knows the landscape as far as as far as recruiting goes. So I let those people ride in those lanes, and it's room in this podcasting world for everybody but if I'm him and I don't know what the situation is with him but if I'm him and I know that his dad who played for the Lions um Dominic Riola played for the Lions for for a while um went to you know a, a native of Hawaii all those things like that Went to the University of Nebraska, played for the Cornhuskers. I get it. I understand how how much that would how much that would be mean. Well, how much that would mean. And he had a really long career as well, too. I mean, you know, talk about a guy who played from he played in the trenches in the National Football League as a center um, interior lineman from 2000, um, 2000, 2001 to 2014. So he had he knows he knows what he's he knows how to and that's probably why his kid is you know, who his kid is, right? I would, I'm not going to tell somebody what to do as far as um, whether you want to do what your father says or not what your father says or whatever, but we'll see if it's his decision or if it's just a family decision to say, hey, let's just see if we can build up Nebraska. What I would do if I was Dylan Riola is, and I know Matt Rule is there sitting there, you got to ride with USC or Georgia or Alabama. Like, um, uh, you know, you, you just have to write one of those schools. Like, you can't sit there and entrust the inner workings of a rebuild at Nebraska. And I know he's a junior, so maybe, so maybe Matt Rule will have those big, nasty offensive linemen there waiting for him, all those things like that. And maybe they'll, they'll show some progress, Right. It's also about exposure, like what, like what conference, um, who knows what kind of movement we're going to be in with, with Nebraska. 
You got you got the SEC, the allure of the SEC, and there's two conferences. Let's just call it like it is in college in college football. It's two conferences. There is the Big Ten, and then there's the SEC. That's it. <laughs> that's it. I mean, that's that, that that's all that, that that's what college football is right now, and that's the reason why UCLA and USC left their conference to come over to a new conference next year. That's the reason why they left. It's big money in the Big Ten. It's just not even funny. <laughs> you gotta be if you gotta be in two major conferences. Those are the two conferences you want to be in. So stop playing games. Don't be silly. Don't be stupid. Like, like I get it. Like you know, I think Matt Rule will do a great job at Nebraska. Without question, he'll do a good job at Nebraska. But. You you have to be, you want to go with the guy who was a Heisman Trophy factory at USC. You want to go to, you know, where Bryce Young played, where Thule played, Tonga Valoa played, where Thule Tonga, Tonga Valoa played. Like, I mean, the, like Matt Jones starting for the Patriots. Like, that's where you should really think about doing this. That's where you should really take a deep breath and start doing this. Like, don't, it's, it's a lot. It, you have a lot on the line. And I know people can go out there and get that whole, like, you go out there and do this thing where you can get, like, that insurance to kind of protect you from injury, all those things like that. And very, very seldom, seldom do we see, you know, people have that life-altering injury, right, that kind of destroys their career in college. But... I'm gonna ride with Kirby Smart. I'm gonna ride with Nick Saban. And I'm gonna ride with, you know, my guy, <laughs> my guy Lincoln Riley. If, if I want to get to the league as a quarterback, and I think, you know, I think, you know, Dad would probably, you know, let him do his thing. And I know he's trying. I know, I know, like I know what it's like because you know when you have kids, you want them, you kind of want some. The one thing you want to share with them is that some of those experiences. And I get it. Like, if he goes to Nebraska, God bless him, do your thing. But for your future, for, you know, you taking that game, taking that game to the next level, playing with great offensive linemen, playing with top-notch, top-of-the-line offensive call, offensive play callers, people who are running pro-style stuff, people who are running things that are going to be – um equivalent to what you see in the National Football League. Not ex no, not not 100%, but like they're going to be those they're going to be those moments where it's going to be exactly what they're running in the, in the National Football League. You know what you got to do, cousin. Don't play games. Don't, don't play games. Like do what do what do what do, do what's right. But those are probably the three schools that if I was him, you know, if I was, you know, if I was him, I'd be like, "Hey, those are three schools that I'm going to visit." I'm going to look at, and I'm going to see if that is what I want to do as far as what I want to attend, where I want to go, and start my future as far as far as that goes. All right. All right. Children's short show today. I'm going to come back um, next, next episode with a viewer comment show. We're going to talk about you know what you guys said in the comments. Keep those comments coming. I appreciate them. Um, and then hit that like button, subscribe, and all those things like that. Keep, helps helps the show tremendously when you do those things. So keep that going. Um, and then we're going to talk about the are the excuse are the excuses for Alice Grinch last year valid? That's one subject for the next show. Are those excuses valid? And your comments, your questions on a student body right USC podcast. And as always, folks, no matter where you are in this world. Fight on.